Juice from the mango, milk from the coconut. Juice from the mango, milk from the coconut. It's breakfast with Bob. Breakfast with Bob. It's breakfast with Bob. Breakfast with Bob. And Pancho Man. We are presented oh. by EA Sports Nutrition, Cliff Bar, Timex, Roca, Tanya Porter Resort, Rudy Project, and Slow Twitch. Our next guest, Cameron Wurf. First time here, right? Bob, it's my first time here, and it is an absolute honor to be here with you, above Ooh. all, at the moment. Are you kidding? I'm looking at you, Olympic rower, 2004 in Athens, pro cyclist from Cannondale Garmin. You've got, you've got the background, my man. Yeah, I've been a sportsman for, I've been fortunate to be a sportsman, you know, all of my adult life. Yes. And um, I've done a couple of other sports. I'm certainly, I think I'm, I can pretty justifiably say I'm a jack of all trades, master of absolutely none of them. Well, when you're talking rowing, when people talk about VO2 max and people talk about power to weight ratio, all the rest of that, rowers usually top out at, at, at the best, best athletes on the planet. How, far, how long is the race that you guys do? Seven yeah. minutes. Seven minutes. Yeah, six or seven minutes. And, and is it? Are you solo or team or? Uh, yeah, I mean you do everything. I'd competed internationally in pretty much every boat class over right. the six or seven years I was on the national team. And for in the Olympics, what did you? Compete? I was in the double. In the double. Yeah. So yeah. how'd you guys do? We got annihilated. <laughs> yeah. We got annihilated. It was actually it was very humbling. We'd won the under twenty three world title the year before by yeah. way too far. We were cocky as all hell. Were you we really? went in there and just you went to got Athens. Were like absolutely fed to the lines. Like who's going to get second here? Pretty much. Yeah. We <laughs> even went out like that in the heat. We had a nice lead, and we thought, oh, this is too easy. Just started to switch it off, and yeah, we just didn't get the memo that the Olympics only happens once every four years, and that it's the biggest thing in rowing. Yes. And everyone wants to win that, and no races are easy. And uh, we were just on the back foot and just got yeah. <laughs> Spat out the backside. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point, it's not like, well, I'll go on the rowing tour and make a living. No. You've got to wait for four years. Pretty much, exactly. And, that, and once you've been to the Olympics, you realize the world titles and whatever mean nothing because that's the pinnacle. Yeah, it doesn't, um, you can win titles in between Olympics. Exactly. People give those away. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you don't perform on the day. Yes. Uh, it means nothing. So, yeah. So, so then you, what, what led you to cycling? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, well, it's sort of a bit of a dare of my mates at the first. You know, we, we always love following it as rowers. Rowers are the biggest cycling oh, that's fans right, yeah. on the planet. They always have the flashiest bikes. Actually, I think if a bike manufacturer wanted to do some marketing, it would be in the rowing. I'd be going and setting up a booth at rowing events because yes. that's where people pay lots of money for bikes. But, um, yeah, they said, you know, I, I sort of stupidly said one day, it'd be interesting to see what it's like, you know, racing at that level. And they said, oh, you should give it a go. <laughs> So, yeah, okay, <laughs> why not? So I uh, decided that year I'd line up at the Nationals just for a bit of fun yeah. in the time trial and, uh, and did pretty well and got approached by the National team. And it was 2007. They said, you know, would you like to change sports? I said, well, if I do really well, will you put me in the Olympic team? And they said, oh, of course. They like, laughed at me but said, yeah, if you're good enough, we'll pick you in the Olympic team. I said, yeah. great, I'll give it a I'm go in. then. <laughs> I never made the Olympic team, uh, sadly, but uh, that's all right. I was stuck on cycling. But you're a, you're a bigger guy in cycling, and a lot of times when you're a bigger guy, it's you become the domestique. Yeah. You're pulling out the other guy, and they go for the win. They get to put their arms up. They get to go with the podium girls, all yeah. the rest of that, yep. while you're back at the van suffering. Yep. Which leads to triathlon. Yeah, triathlon. When you suffer, you get the prize. True. You, you still get to. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a big thing, and it's a means to an end. When you're breaking your way into the world tour, the top tier, you know you have to pay your dues and and being aware. And I actually really enjoyed it. And I and it's something I know I'm actually I'm actually I believe I'm reasonably good at. Yes. Um, it's the best way I can add something to the team. But yeah, in time, it sort of becomes a bit monotonous. Just turning up and doing the same thing and you realize, well, I'm actually an athlete. I need to feel that. It's great seeing your teammate win. You feel good about that, but you don't really feel great. Yes. And um, so I really was craving, I guess, something to... Something just a little that, different. That little individual bit. And, yeah. you know, in a triathlon, actually, you don't even have to win. If you've just done the best you can do in a triathlon, you feel great. You feel great. good about yourself. You know? And you figure if someone like Tim Reed could be good at it, Pretty much anybody could be good at it. Tim, 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 exactly. I mean, that's that's been a huge motivating factor for me because as a child, Tim and I grew up together on Lord Howe Island. Yeah. Showed no sporting None talent whatsoever. whatsoever. No, um, pretty so, hopeless. You know, for him to be one of the best triathletes in the world, I'm like, well, 
I, I'm I mean, in. Uh, I don't need to spell it out for you. <laughs> exactly. I was thinking that. I'm like, of course he got in. Mm. If Tim was good, yeah. what the heck? And he's got all these sponsors and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so he give you some of his leftover sponsors? Yeah, or? yeah, he did. He gave me this, you know, leftover shirt that nice. he didn't want. Ken and I were trying to, you know, sign him, of course, and <laughs> you know, handed him all this stuff, and he just fobbed it off to me. And uh, What was your first race as a triathlete? Uh, it was Oceanside. Oh, no, it's not true. Way back. No. Way back. Way back. Way back, my first race as a triathlete were on Lord Howe Island. Yes. Tim and I were about, uh, I think we were about eight or nine. Oh, really? Ten, yeah. Did you and kick his butt? No, no, it was a ding-dong battle, to be honest. Uh, in the swim, we went sort of shoulder to shoulder. Um, there was, I think it was probably about four of us in the field. Yeah. Uh, it was one guy that was a, b- <laughs> that was a bit old. Yeah, they were in an island of 300 people. You don't get a lot of people that turn up for the annual, uh, I think it was Discovery Day. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or it might have been Christmas Day Triathlon or somewhere around there. And uh, we got on the bike and I... I was really excited. I had a bit of an edge in the in the bike leg. My grandfather had this old Apollo race bike, which were pretty rare on the island. Yes. I'm going to kick his ass here. And Tim was on his old man's flash mountain bike, which <laughs> even if he put the seat down as far as he could go, he was still riding on his tippy toes. I was like, <laughs> novice, I'm going to crush you. And I took off and got a good gap. And I was coming down uh, Leander Lay Hill back towards the uh, the jetty for the, for the second transition, and my chain jammed. Oh. And it was sort of that touch and go, you know, do I push the bike to the transition or do I ditch it in the bushes as I pass one of the resorts and steal another bike? <laughs> so I opted for the latter, of course. Steal a bike. Yeah, okay. So I see him, by this stage, Tim sort of just caught me as I've run into the, run into the resort, grabbed this pink, pink fixed wheel bike with a basket on the front, stepped through and jumped on it and chased him down the street to get to the jetty. And then... Um, yeah, then the next, the, the rest of it was one of the most tragic days in my sporting career to that point when uh, Tim Passed slowly, you. methodically, well, no, he got off the bike ahead of me and I just had to watch this duck thing running yeah. along the road. And I was like, <laughs> how is he going that fast? Like, it makes no biomechanical sense. And that's me thinking like that as a nine year old. He yeah. looked that terrible. <laughs> Um, and so it's amazing. He's made a career out of triathlon. <laughs> like it's absolutely it extraordinary. Really is a, I know. Extraordinary. Yeah, anybody. That's why it says anything is possible. Yeah. Iron Man, anything is possible. Exactly. Even if you suck, you can be good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Perseverance. So Oceanside, age yeah. grouper, uh, yep. 70.3. You had yep. one of the better bike splits of the day, yep. obviously. Yeah, I should. Yeah, you yeah. should. But exactly. I, I actually, I was a bit of a girl that day. I, I was going quite quick. What, and I you got, were really fast? No, you no. I, I, I sort of... I actually, for the first time in my life, I thought, actually, I want to try and win this, yes. the age group. Yeah. So I caught the pro women. I've been told if I catch the pro women, you're going really fast. So yes, I caught them quite early. So I thought, oh, I might save some energy because, truth be told, I hadn't run more than 10 kilometers ever. <laughs> so I had no idea what to expect uh, for the half marathon. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was that you know, sort of came into my mind. So I thought, I'll just save what energy I can and, uh, and just see if I can actually do something. So that day, to be honest, running an hour and a half for me, after the bike. You ran an hour and a half your first ever half yeah, marathon. Yeah, I was pretty stoked. You know, I mean, that, uh, that well made you me feel be. pretty good. And then Whistler, you had the fastest bike split of the day. Yeah. Qualified for this race. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're here, but you've got a stress fracture. Yeah. So knowing you got a stress fracture, are you just going to, and you're racing as an age grouper, are you going to try to put a bike split out there? Oh, of course. But there's a bit of a funny story about that. I was at the Cannondale sales meeting, and it was two weeks before Whistler. We had a guy by the name of Bonner Paddock who did this event a couple yes, of years yeah, ago. Yeah. Cerebral palsy, do a speech. He broke 27 bones in his feet during that race. And that inspired me. I thought, wow, if someone with cerebral palsy can do an Ironman, yes. me as an able, healthy person, yes. surely I can go and do an Ironman. Right. So I said to Canada, lend me in the first one. So they sent me to Whistler. I, I, I had no training, so I was like, bugger it. I'm going to go as fast as I can in the swim, as fast as I can on the bike, and hope to high hell I can run a marathon because I'm... Until that run, the longest run I'd done was Oceanside. So I wasn't at all prepared. And before that, the longest one you'd done was, was 10. So 10, I, was, I was doubling. So I, it was a natural progression for me. Yes. But then, the ironically, Bonner, I, a week later, I'm on my mountain bike. I stuck my foot out and bit Tim Reed style, really, a bit uncoordinated, <laughs> jagged it on a rock and snapped two bones in my foot. Oh. So I haven't been able to run since, since uh, Whistler until so you- yesterday. Oh, so you ran yesterday. In the underpants the run? The underpants run. Yeah. And that's I a quarter feel fantastic. mile. You feel I good. I feel great. Yeah. And in fact, the placebo effect, I'm thinking of running tomorrow in the underpants that I wore yesterday. I would do that. Yeah, because they look sensational. They, uh, yeah. we, we actually heard that. on uh, saw that online. People were talking about how good you looked in underpants. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> right. Uh, and now are you thinking rowing for 2016? Yeah, I mean, with the Olympics coming back, and that's been the funny thing. All this, the triathlon, the broken foot, it's changed a lot in my outlook perspective, and... 
I actually, one of the things I could do because my foot was flat was use the rowing machine. So I've actually been back on the machine. I'm actually stronger than I was before 2004. So I've, yeah, I've been in communication with Rowing Australia and we've got a plan. And I love it. Yeah, there's a good chance that, uh, well, I'm going to try and be there. You know, they've still got to select me. you got to, <laughs> you got to still earn your spot. It's not a given, but uh, I believe if I put my mind to it, I can be there for sure. So if, you're, if you get off the bike and your foot hurts, I'm imagining you're going, I'm going to get to the finish line if I have to walk this thing. Absolutely. I'll, I'll adopt the same philosophy I did in Whistle. I'm going to go as hard as I can in that swim. I'm probably going to be seasick. Tim yes. has warned me about that. It's pretty horrific out yeah. there. But I think I can get out of there okay. I'll, I'll go hell for leather on the bike. I'm going to treat it like I'm chasing down a breakaway on the road. Yeah. You know, try and catch Kinlay. Might be difficult, 30 minutes. I have, it's not often you pull back a 30-minute gap in 180K, but you never know. Um, and then we'll worry about the run when we get to it. You know, to be honest, the boys asked me about nutrition on the run. I said, I don't know, don't they have aid stations? They have aid stations. So uh, as long as there's stuff out there, I'll be fine. I love it. <laughs> Cameron, thanks so much for joining us. Bob, uh, absolute honor to be here, and I hope this is the start of something we do annually. Annually. Cameron Worf has been a guest. I want a round of applause for this young man. <laughs> Presented by ES Sports Nutrition, Cliff Bar, Timex, Roca, Tanya Porter, Rudy Project, Slow Twitch. Anybody who makes fun of Tim Reed is a friend of ours. A friend of the show. <laughs> Pacho, man, take us out. Juice from the mango, milk from the coconut. Juice from the mango, milk from the coconut. Breakfast with Bob. Breakfast with Bob. Thank you, Pacho Man. <laughs> <laughs>